how big is the present? We usually think of the present as being that infinitesimal moment in time between the present or between the past and the future. So if we draw a space-time diagram, we would say if this were space and this were time, then this line here would be the shape of space at the present, and this would be the arrow of time going forward and backwards. This is the past, this is the future, this is our right, and this is our left. And if we draw the scale properly, 10 feet, negative 10 feet, and here we are at zero, and say this is one second in the future, and two seconds in the future, then we have an accurate representation of space and time. The present is here and there and there, all at this particular moment in time. So this line here is the present. However, if we change the scale on this, we will find, if I change the scale on this so that this is one foot, and this is about one nanosecond, that is one billionth of a second, we actually find that there's something strange happens to the present. What happens is that the speed of light is such that an event here, depending on who observes it, an event here that happens almost one nanosecond in the future and a little over one foot, well, a little, about, a little over a foot over to the right, it's not clearly before or after this event here, which occurs where we are at the current time. In other words, depending on who you are, you may see this event f happen first and then this event. That's uh, our case right here. Or this event, depending on your motion, might slide down here and actually be occurring before this event. So the present, depending on how you draw your scale, if you have this scale marked out in nanoseconds and this scale marked out in feet, then the present is just as big as the past and the future combined. If you look in Wikipedia, under uh, Lorentz transformation, you can find this excellent animation of a space-time diagram, which is being, uh, which is progressing through time from the perspective of an accelerating object. Um, the accelerating object follows the thick dotted line on the center of the screen. So as that line is bending, you'll see that it is always moving straight up where the two where the two uh, lines meet however um, the uh, the events that it is moving towards are represented by the big black dots so you're going to be basically you've got an object that is colliding with other objects at each of these points along the way so those are events in space-time um, in the future now all of the dots along this row are definitely in the future of this object. And notice that they never cross this line or this line. Now on the other hand, these events are moving up and down, moving down and then you'll see them sometimes slide back up. So it's like at one point in time they're observed as being in the future and then they move back down and, they're, and they are events in the past. 
So it is possible to take an event, accelerate toward it. You'll see it is actually an acceleration toward he's doing when the when it moves into the past. The event can be moved from the future to the past or from the past to the future. But once it crosses either of these two lines, you've gone through sort of a horizon where that that event is then either in the future or in the past. And it cannot, it can't, once it crosses the line, it cannot cross the line again. So once it crosses this line from the future to the present, it can go back and forth through there, but once it passes from the present to the past, then it also cannot cross this line again. Here's another uh, space-time diagram. This uh, has lines, these dots here, uh, represent a set of events that seem to be simultaneous to a particle moving here. Um, when, uh, when at this, in this position, it would look like this event happened first, then this event, then this event, then this event, then this event, and all of these events are taking place at different places and at different times. Basically, it would look like all of these events were moving close to the speed of light to the left, and this event would be occurring now, and all of these events would be happening in the future off to your left. Um, but, uh, that's to that's to an observer to whom uh, all of these events appear to be moving near the speed of light. To another observer, uh, if I could pause it, I want to pause it when you get just got the horizontal and vertical, but I, I don't know how to pause it. So if you can see at one point here, there is some observer who sees all of the horizontal events as happening all simultaneously. And another obser and he also sees all of the events that are vertical. He doesn't see them happening simultaneously, but he sees them happening one after another in the same place. So that's what the uh, vertical when they are vertical that represents particle or events that are happening all in the same place at different times. When they are horizontal, it represents a whole bunch of events that happen at the same time but in different places. So different observers will observe the events happening in a different order. For instance, this event sees all of the events passing by him from the right to the left going uh, and another observer who's moving relative to those events will see them moving from the left to the right. In any case, this whole region to the left and the right of the X represent the present. The region below the X represents the past, and the region above the X represents the future. So what is the size of the present in this diagram? The present is equal in size to both the past and the future combined. So, if you're ever wondering about uh, how important it is to do the right thing and how important it is, or if you ever wonder how important um, your actions are in the world, um, I encourage you to recognize um, just how big and important the present really is. If you're wondering whether to if whether to believe an eternal life or not just consider how big the present actually is the present is the same size as the past and future combined